<laughs> Welcome to the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast. My God, big one. I'll tell you what, Eddie Betts has uh, put a bomb underneath the Adelaide Crows, so cool. we'll discuss that. Good. Nice. New book and some new revelations, John. It was a John. bit weird when you walked in with a power stance this morning. <laughs> exactly. you got to take up more room, Sam. That's the problem. Apparently. Kate Sobrano was in, which yes. is a wonderful. And Will Anderson. Will Anderson, one of the greats. And I'm going to change your life. If you've got anyone that you're responsible for baking a birthday cake for, mm. work, home, whatever, I'm going to change your life. Whoa! I think Jake's aren't funny. He's a big chance today. Oh, did you say that was, that was on as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Big show. And random thoughts. Mm. Enjoy. Oh. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Wild and woolly out there this morning and last it night. It is wild and woolly. Last night it was wild and woolly. Mm. Hunted. The finale of Hunted was on. Jeez, it was good, Swanee. It's been a good show. They're already recruiting for next season. I really? noticed on Instagram this morning, yeah. We got the uh, the winners. We do. We've got the winners. That's not a spoiler alert. Robin Starth here coming in at 6.40. It'd be great How to talk to they you. they evade capture? Good yeah. effort for 21 days, Swanee. So good. And it was red hot, and it was in around parts where we live. Do you reckon you could do it? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not, it'd be bloody hard, because you got mm. every decision you got to make has got to be spot on. Yeah. You'd, you'd slip up once. I Just agree. one little slip up in your I'd stuff. be useless at it. I reckon Jonathan would have to wear a big fat suit or something because yeah. he's he's got a recognisable yeah. stature. Well, I love that Robbie. Uh, Rob's a hairdresser yeah. and he went into disguise. What do you mean? That was in Mailing Road in Canterbury, Swanee. Yeah. Because I was sitting there with little Jack, my son, and he goes, Dad, that's just down the road next to the Chinese place. Really? Love it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, Robin Stathy. Stathy? Stathy? Yeah. Uh, can't wait to talk to him. It's going to be this hour. Uh, also, jokes aren't funny because it's Wednesday. Uh, that Mitsubishi Mirage. For, like, every week we talk about yeah, how it's in do. the basement, mm. but it is in the basement. Mm. And do you know how many dicks have been drawn on the windows, on the dust? All of them. Too so many, many dicks. So many. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Whether you've been craving the ocean, snow, mountains or city lights, there are so many possibilities for you and your next trip. Make up for missed holidays and explore more of Oz with whatif.com. Jump online or on the What If app. What if it's Aussie for travel? Do you ever silence notifications on your phone? Yeah, yeah. I do too. Only at night, though, when I'm sleeping because I don't want, you know, someone to text me and wake me up. For no reason as well. Exactly. Have you noticed this, JB, on your phone? Is it, It's a new... It's one of the new updates that hasn't been around for that long. Sometimes it says you go to text someone and it says their notifications are silenced. Yes. And you have to hit it again What do to you, notify them anyway. Do you get... I get in a little bit insulted. It feels like a flex to me. Mm. I've got one friend and I've just checked again. She's my darling. I love her. Does she just notify... You, sorry, silence you or silence everyone? Though? She silences everyone. Yeah. But it just makes me think, do I send this text? That's the equivalent of putting up a hand. Yeah, it is. You right. know, of going, whatever you want to say to me, I'm actually not interested right now. Why don't you just put it on aeroplane mode? If you're not going to realise that, if you don't want notifications, why don't you just put turn the phone off? Why wouldn't you just do that? Because it's, it's easier not to turn it off. Yeah, and you still no, might want aer- aer- Aeroplane mode is the same as notifications because if you don't want notifications, you don't want to be interrupted. Yeah, but on aeroplane mode, you don't have internet. You don't get iMessage, you don't okay. get anything. Yeah. Yeah, but you're still going to get... Well, clearly, if you don't want to be notified, you don't want to be have anything come towards no, you. No, that's not true. Right. right. Okay, you, you want some things. Yeah, you want to be able to check your emails, Google serial killers, all that. You just... Allegedly, you just don't want to hear from someone. Yeah. Right, okay. And I'm... It's a new thing, mm. and when I see it, I don't... It gives you the option... It goes, um, I don't you understand know, it Dino. because if you've got the internet, Grandpa, still, catch up. You can still get an email and an iMessage, which is what you get anyway. Yeah, but it, it's not going to tell you that you've got a message. Right. And then also, I think it gives you a get out of jail free card if you don't respond because it's like, I'm sorry, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't <laughs> know. Yeah. Particularly during the day when mm. it's on, mm. I find that a bit passive aggressive. Okay. Depending like, I'm on... just wondering if it's just me. 13, 24, 10. Mm. This new feature, 
Does it make you question your validity as a friend to the to the person that you're texting? Well, that's a good point, Swan. I never thought of it like that. Yeah, I I really do. I, I take bull, it. I bulldoze my way straight through that bloody symbol. So because it gives you it gives you an option saying, um, you know, like Chrissy has her has her notification silenced. Do you want to send anyway? That's right. That sends me into a spiral. No, I go stuff them. I'm sending it anyway. I don't. I go. They, they've just done the equivalent of. I can't deal with anything right now. Right. Is it as serious yes. as I think? Is it like, because I imagine when I see that, I go, oh, they're having a really hard time. They can't deal with the outside world. I'm not going to add to their stress Oh, yeah, no, add to their, but you don't to fill their pressure. bucket any further. Gotcha. Yes. It's just. It's a very kind friend, It's 20. such a conundrum for me, and I'm just wondering, am I the only one that takes this so seriously mm-hmm. and just thinks too much about it? Yeah. Thirteen twenty four ten. Give us a call, Naomi from Murrumbina. Naomi, good morning. What do you think of this feature? A- am I crossing boundaries? Am I abusing my friends by still continuing to send text messages? I I, I would ask whether your friend actually knows she's got it on, ah. because that um, that happened to me, and my whole family spent a week wondering whether they should or shouldn't disturb me, <laughs> and then I got a <laughs> I got a very cross. Um, uh, chat with my sister on the Friday night, saying, um, "Are you are you just pretending to be conscientious at work, or are you really having a hard time? Because I don't even know what to do." So it yes. does put people in a bad position, but she might not even know she's doing it. But I love that it's clearly not just me that sees it and goes, "Okay, it's one of two things: one, someone's busy at work and needs to focus, or two, they're having a really rough time and they're you know isolating themselves." I think if that's the case, they should just be yeah, switching it off. Yeah. You know, remove it physically from the room. And I have to do that at work. If I have to remove my phone physically from the room if I'm yeah. concentrating at work. Yeah. Don't put the decision on the other people. <laughs> yeah, I know. Mm. It's well, a weird flex. First class and 50K could be yours, Naomi. I mean, you could be laughing, friend. Thank Good you for your can insight. Can you do it individually? Can you target friends? Because then you just got that annoying friend that you just don't want to get in contact with. Well, you, you, can, you can block. use that as an excuse. You can block people. Okay. That's Specifically, right go right into there like I could block okay. you. Daniela from Seaford, Daniela. Morning. You are a D&D fiend. I am. I'm doing it all the time and there's no need to be offensive. Now, why do you do it? <laughs> I do it because when I'm in the office, I am sort of regularly making phone calls and I'm and then typing notes while I'm not on the phone and I don't like my phone vibrating and sending through messages or ringing. Mm. It also disrupts my colleagues as well. So it's a practical find... thing, Daniela. I do. It's a practical thing for you. Absolutely. Do you also find when you've got it on D and D and you're on the phone? No, when it's not on D and D, and then somebody calls you, the iPhone gives you that confounding choice between um, end this call and take the new one, mm. hold yes. the call. Remember those the, the three options it gives That's you? That's exciting. <laughs> I can't I work little, them out. I have a little automated message as well. So I say, I'm so sorry, I can't take your call right now. I'll call you back as soon as possible. <laughs> Daniela, you are sorted. You are very efficient. You are totally sorted. Daniela, All right. you could be laughing. First class of 50K. Finally, Jeanette in Jeanette, Geelong. Jeanette, sort me out. Chrissy, I do think you're overthinking it. As a shift worker... I don't use Do Not Disturb, though. There's another option where you hit focus, you turn the sleep button on, you still get all your messages and notifications, but not loudly, and no one gets advised that you've got it on. Ah, Really? I've seen that focus button. I didn't know it did that. Mm. Yeah, that's what I use when I'm going to sleep. (sighs) Yes. So if you want to, you know, silence everybody, does not be disturbed, turn the focus on, no one gets notified or offended, and you're right to go. Okay, I like it. if you're sitting on the bedside table, it lights up the screen. If you get no, a message. No, it doesn't and even light up the screen. Really? Does not. Does oh, there not. you go. Yeah. So when does not. Jeanette's debt collectors are calling, she can just be blissfully... <laughs> Unaware. That's really good, Jeanette. That's really good. Jeanette. And I, I like that you told me that I'm overthinking it. I just don't yeah. want to. I just don't want to step all over somebody's boundaries. Nah. You know. Well, I, yeah, it, I've got a daughter that's a nurse, and I know that when she's got it on, she just wants to be left alone. So I just leave her. 
Right on. Hey, everyone that's just contributed, and Jeanette, I think, was the best, to mm-hmm. be honest. You're all going to go see Nope as well. It's a new Jordan Peele movie. Oh, cool. It looks insane. August 11, it's in cinemas. You feel be- better, Swanee? Mm. Yeah, I do. I do. <sighs> this is the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast. Yeah. Robin Starthy, winners of The Hunted. Here they are. Yes. Welcome, guys. Thank you for having Thank us. So this is so exciting. <laughs> um... There were, we've got so many questions. First of all, congratulations on being part of a hugely successful first season of a, of a new show here in Australia. It's so great. It's exciting. It's actually an honour to be part of the first season because there's so much that all the subsequent seasons are not going to experience. They're going to approach randoms and they're mm. going to be like, oh, yeah. my God, you're doing Hunted. Mm. We didn't get yeah, that. So many people will probably offer more help just because of watching the show. Absolutely. So, yeah. I want to know what made you apply in the first place. Well, being part of the first season, professional hide and seek, and a friend had messaged me saying, this sounds like your jam, and I was like, absolutely. And then thinking of the reward and potentially getting there and what you could do with it, and for Maddie and I challenging stereotypes in the community who haven't had that representation in the strategy, operations, tactical gameplay, and I was like... What an opportunity. How long did you think it'd last, boys? When you arrived at uh, Federation Square 21 days back, uh, you were dumped there with 16 other people, including your partners. Uh, what did you think? How long did you think it'd last? Uh, going into this, like, uh, I spent quite a bit of time planning. Like, I think it would have been about four months in total. Really? Just planning. Like, All those disguises and wigs? Detail. Absolutely. Everything was categorised. Everything had, like, been bagged into looks, different styles. <sighs> I had about 40 kilos of, like, um, luggage taking around, <laughs> and it was all disguises. We had no camping equipment. We didn't have food. We didn't have any of that. Would you do? That. Would you take that tack again? Um, going, if I was to go into it again? Yeah. Absolutely. That, 40, 40 kilos is, is heavy to lug around for yeah. that amount of time. But, I mean, like, you won, so... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was. Worked. That last 24 hours, you were, you were dressed as a, as a woman. Yeah. Uh, down around down around the Burundara area, you're floating around there, our neck of the woods, Swanee. Yeah. Rob's walking around there as a woman, in a yeah. skirt, in a wig. Look, so that whole outfit was meant to be for a taunt. So we were going to go out and we were going to try and, like, kind of bring them into a certain area and then take a photo with us, like, you know, at a bar or something. So I was dressed to go to a bar. I wasn't dressed to be in the country. So you can imagine, like, being in a countryside, like, town and everyone's looking at you and I'm like, I feel so exposed. Yes, of course. How wi- wild did the disguise options get? Like, street mime, are we talking? <laughs> so I, I was trying to do disguises that would help us blend ish like you know I, I don't want people to look at us straight away and think oh my god that's like that's yeah a wig. no um, that was that was our role yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so our disguises were not very elevated and that's yeah. where we're defying some stereotypes but we're also conforming to some in the oh, yeah. community hey it works <laughs> what about the uh, decisions to split from your partners uh a couple of episodes back you both when you went your separate ways from your mm-hmm. partners on the show and that yeah. proved to work out for you boys, but not for yeah. your partners. Well, well think, yeah, throughout the run, <laughs> the every brain. decision no. you make, every decision is risky. Like, mm. you are literally evaluating five terrible options. So you're like, I need to engage with the least risk. And when we're engaging with risk, do what we can to mitigate stuff. So that's when Maddie and I said, if we're doing this risky thing, meeting a mate, we need to separate. Because if one of us gets caught, the other one runs. And Did you discuss before filming mm. that if one of you gets caught, you're, you've... you've you're not going to sacrifice your position yeah. that you're going to... Uh, Abs- well, absolutely. Yeah. My, my position was that um, I was going into it because I was thinking, okay, I could be the decoy, so mm. try and get the information through um, and then try and pass it on to him. That was the whole plan. Um, but the way things were working out in the day, like it was hard getting help yeah. that day. It was very, very hard. As amateur fugitives, <laughs> uh, what did you learn about disappearing if you ever need to, if the tax department is after you. What's your number one tip? I'd go straight to Mykonos. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a tax mark. haven there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Tony Mockbell's wig, you reckon? Yeah. 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 Well, hey, did, did you work out with your, with your partners, your respective uh, partners on the show, you would split the money if Absolutely. one of you's won? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that was 100,000 winners check. Just, yeah. Uh, we spent all that time together planning and, like, you know, going into this, we were always going to split no matter the situation. Yeah. So, and yeah. both of us, we, we 
ended up in the chopper without our partners, but we got through 19 days with our partners. Yeah. If we had started as solo contestants, we potentially might not have got to where we were. Yeah. So The costumes are pretty elaborate. You probably broke even with the prize money. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> Look, I spent a lot on that. <laughs> I did notice on Instagram this morning, uh, post the finale, that they're currently recruiting for the next wave, season oh, two of applicants. <laughs> What? You won't be able to do it again, I don't think. Oh, 100% I wouldn't. <laughs> um, what is your number one tip for those thinking that they might have a crack? Be careful who you do it with because yes. I think Matt and I, we've known each other for over 20 years. There is nothing our friendship hasn't endured. So there was nothing they can throw at us that would break our bond. Mm. And I knew right. you always had my back. And if you were to go there with your neighbour or someone you've been dating for three months or someone yeah. you met on Tinder last night, then that's probably not going to be the best strategy. Okay. Or maybe the yeah. Tinder one. You've got to learn but... <laughs> every aspect of a person's personality before going into it. Um, I'm extremely organised and like you would think it was the other way around, mm. but I like organisation. I like planning. I like all of that. Jake is very much about, oh, let's just do this off the cuff. <laughs> Jake, but Jake's a copper in real life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, was he trying to? Was he trying to be the organizer? Say, mate, I know this. This is the way the crooks do it. Or? Yeah, we, we clashed in that. In terms yeah, of like, I would. yeah, <laughs> definitely, because <laughs> both of us like to chase take charge with everything so boys yeah i'm fascinated about you knocking on random stores asking for help right? yes <laughs> so tell uh, me how you do that without sounding like a psychoc a psychoc <laughs> <psychoc? laughs> <A psychoc? laughs> so you knock on the door hello what do you say uh, but look i have a couple like i don't know i giggle and people just like automatically want to help you like oh yeah to make it, to make it like very natural we'd approach them just like winking or twitching with our eyes yeah. and then say oh, I'm no. a fugitive on the run oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so we had... most of the time the cameras were, weren't were right by us um, right. when we we're approaching people so mm. it's very natural okay. um, I would which never made it let really you hard. into my house <gasps> oh no people I wouldn't I can bring some <laughs> <laughs> oh okay actually yeah you can stay as long as you like well you love them on Hunted wait till you see them on RBT it's uh, <laughs> Rob and Stanley. <laughs> Congratulations, boys. That's sick. Well done. Thank you well, so much for having well, us. Boys. Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. Sad day for Dino. Yeah, it's man. Been a bad season for the West Coast Eagles. Two wins. Zero <laughs> memories, two wins. <laughs> on the bottom of a ladder, Swanee. Mm. Uh, but yesterday it was announced that Josh Kennedy, one of the greatest Eagles of all time and a hero to Dino, mm. premiership player, mm. is retiring. How do you feel, oh. Dino? Uh, sad but happy that it happened. You know, like after a, a nice relationship that, you know, you remember the good times. No, uh, I'm sad, but he is our biggest ever goal kicker. Yeah. And he's gone out, not on a high, JB, but mm. I don't know. It's, it's not a lot of sadness here because we know it was coming. And it's the Cookie Monster mantra. Don't don't be sad because Cookie is finished. Be be happy because Cookie happened. Swanee. <laughs> That's right. The thing about don't Josh Kennedy, yes. when others had kicked goals... He was truly thrilled. Excited. He was the happiest man for other people's success. I love that. Great. 715 goals, 24th in the all-time list one. It's a pretty good effort. Yeah. And and quickly, famously, when Juddy left the Eagles, it's like Dusty walking out on you guys if that ever happened. It's huge. Gut-wrenching, right, Sonny? Yeah. But Josh Kennedy is one of the people we got for Juddy in the deal that happened. Who wins in that deal? Well, I think Eagles did, man. Like, let's be honest. What did win a flag. Jay won a brown low. The Eagles won a flag. Yeah. So JK's been an unbelievable player. He used to kick big bags of Mate. goals. He's a ripping bloke as well. Go yeah. well, JK. Go well, Go friend. Well. And I love this beautiful moment yes. on the premiership podium, Swanee, after they won in 2018, of course, that famous grand final against Collingwood. This is the little kid presenting yeah. JK with a medal. So all the little kids get to speak to every player, right, with a special little moment. Yeah. And this is what the little girl said to Josh. <laughs> Well done. Yeah, piss off, you little shit. <laughs> Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. Welcome to your, I'm going to say Wednesday. Feels like it. Oh. Um, it's bump day. Mm. Gosh, what what even what, what even mood do I find you in? A good one, Sam Pang. I'm in a good mood. Good yes. morning, everyone. Hello. Despite it being, I think it's stating the obvious. Yes, it's pretty good. It was windy last night. Wild and woolly. Oh my Wild God. Wild and woolly. And then I've woken up this morning and it feels calm. Eerily calm. Maybe yeah. it's the calm before the storm. Someone I'm, may die. <laughs> mm. Hopefully it's not you. We'd miss you. Um, I have looked up my weather app mm. because I'm mad for the weather. Mm. And between one and four, no showers, 
sunny, 19 degrees. You could have you could hit the golf course, guys. What time's tee off? What time? What Tell time, us. Sammy? Give us a number. It's twelve fifty six. Yes. Don't sorry, I can't sorry, that's, today. sorry. That's for me and my uh, my yes. my playing partners. Not um, not lug nuts over here. He's uh, not playing today. He's, well, I'm uh, a family man. You are not. I have to do school pick up. <laughs> I am a family man. I'm holding the family together. <laughs> Wait, uh, doing? Mate, I'm like Rambo's donkey at the moment, honestly. I'm mm. carrying that much luggage and that much gear, yeah. holding together while you just swan around town. Swan around? Are you even a father? What? Everyone's sick. Everyone at home is yeah. sick at the moment. Sick Sam, of your you bull- wouldn't know. No, just kidding. What? What's that? I was going to say sick of your bullshit. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, that's what I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm sick. rough. Sick really? of the death of you. All right, let's you have a fight. <laughs> Did, 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 did Finally. You, did you have a... I thought about you because I thought... Did you have your teeth cleaned yesterday? Uh, did you, have, you said you were on the dentist. I think I did, yeah. The day before. Yeah, uh, Give us yeah. a look at him. Give us a look at him. Yuck. Oh, uh, good, don't I? I was thinking, of knocking, <laughs> I was thinking knocking, of knocking one of them out. Oh, what exactly. Do you oh! <laughs> Why don't you do still uh, get the black text up like you did with Josh Frydenberg's posting <laughs> before the election? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what they were doing in you know in your backyard, by, in your front yard, by the way. But anyway. it's Wednesday. Jokes aren't funny. Start calling now. Uh, I don't know what else to say to people. We want to give away a car, and we can't give away a car. So make sure it's a good joke. Pang laughs. But also make sure that you're a funny person. Have confidence. Just, just I think give we it a should go. blow the car up at the end of the year. Yeah, it doesn't go. This is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. I want some tropical stuff. Oh, yes. Thought you'd never ask. Wednesday. (laughs) (laughs) Time now. Time now. For a... For a... Sense of the day. This is... This is actually not bad uh, today, tropical stuff, because I feel as though the Commonwealth Games, they're on at a time... Slot where you, if you wake, if you're not watching it, you'll wake up and you need to know what happened the night before. Mm. When I say need, not no, really. But, not but, well, they're in prime time though in the evenings. Are they? Yeah, seven thirty till ten thirty is where a lot of events are happening. Full disclosure, uh, no, I just no, had no, a no. comment with Dino mm. listening to the news. Mm. We've got a swag, a bag of gold medals, mm. and I said, "Does anyone care?" About the Commonwealth Games. That's that's that's, that's, that's rough and it's unpatriotic. A it's a negative, a cynical view of these elite athletes performing at a very I very know. high level, I'll and you're myself, dismissing them. I'll see myself out name, of, the, of name, the country. Name five athletes, bang. Charm is McKeon. Um, the flying mullet last night. Exactly, whoever that is. Toadfish Rebecca is he? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Rowan Browning. Oh, Mo- world Toadfish champion Toadfish. Molly O'Callaghan. Great name. He's now a Commonwealth Games title holder after holding off holding off Emma McCann to claim gold wow. in the 100 metre freestyle final. That's big. It's big, huge. Australian uh, Shana Jack finished second. McEwen was third. It meant that the Aussies swept the podium in the 100 metres freestyle. Shana mm. Jack sounds like the sort of barmaid that you want on your side. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Go she'll cut you. Shana Jack. Any problems? She'll she'll be she'll jump up. She'll just be there ready Punch to go. On. <laughs> um, so that's the yeah. They're, well, the Commonwealth Games. They're, they're the athletics not, not is good everyone, though because we're are. not as uh, we're mm. not as strong in the athletics. Mm. Um, so if we can compete in the athletics, it's good to watch because it's not like the swimming where we just dominate every event. There you go. Exactly. So it's on for the. I think mm. the and that's just started. Yes, last night. I think it's on till Monday or Tuesday. I think. What about that handsome mullet boy? Yeah, yeah Rowan Brownie. Yes. Yeah, he won the well. He's second in the heat, so he's through to the semis. Semi. Have you been watching? Yeah, cool. No, I just watched that because oh, I wanted that, to see if he broke ten seconds. I would have thought with all that parenting yeah. you're doing, mate, you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't have any of your time. <laughs> so. He's watching it with his kids. He is uh, parenting. Christine, you like cats, don't you? I love cats. A yeah. cat food inspired restaurant for humans is opening in New York. Oh, that sounds disgusting. I love Please. cats, but I don't like cat food. It's the uh, it's a pop up restaurant in Manhattan's West Village. Ooh. Dino, you probably hit that uh, area. I think Jack and I woke up outside it. <laughs> I guess. So it's intended, Swanee, for humans. The, the intention is to to mirror the sensory experience of cats at mealtime. Do you know what I mean? So it's not they're not eating cat food. They're, it's it's about texture and ah, and flavour. Okay. Do, you, know I mean? Do also, you eat it from a bowl on the floor? Yeah, there's no cutlery, mm. and there's no napkins. You lick yourself clean. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's mate. It's they're going all in. <laughs> Plenty of milk. Don't do that. Do it one what more was, time. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's disgusting. <laughs> Mate, Gary Lyon does it all the time on, on the footy because the lizard, 
He refers to Nick Blakey, the Sydney Swans flyer, the youngster, as the lizard. And then he always goes... Oh, 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 every time. That's it's horrendous. Like, why is that so disgusting? I don't know. But it's something, it does There's something to something me. something about it. It does it to me as well. <laughs> Do it again. One more. No. It's not weird. good. It's weird. Just remember, though, you, you can say no. You played 15 years of the highest. No, no I, I don't do it. Gary Lyon does it. Mm. No, oh. you don't. Hey, uh, what about this one, Swanee? We have never met, we haven't mentioned this, but you mentioned golf at the study. But you know, there's a rival tour going on. There's like it's there's there's the American PGA tour, which is the you know the traditional the that's there. But then it's a there's a there's a Saudi backed golf series called Live, no, which I, is ugh. which is gr- poaching and grabbing some of the bigger names in golf. Who's the CEO? Who's the CEO? Yeah. Oh, Greg Norman. Greg. Old PGA trouser python time. himself. Yeah. So there's a lot of names. I won't bore you. There's a lot of names. <laughs> <laughs> what trouser? What python. trouser python? Oh mate, it's a, that that man has a cannon on him. That let's, <laughs> fair. It's a, it's a fair one wood if you know what I mean. That's what I'll say, man. <laughs> when he pulls out the driver, he pulls out the driver. Mm, he does. I want to say five iron. He's, yeah. lo- he's uh, long off the tee, Sam. Hey, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so the news is that the so it's called Live Golf, Swanee. And uh, they they are when when I say they're just grabbing names, it's like they're offering players a hundred, hundred and fifty million just to sign on, just to come over and play with us. Wow! And the only I would only yeah. mention this today. You don't have to play well, we just get that just sign on. I only mention this one is because Tiger Woods was offered, but has not gone as <sighs> yet. He was offered a billion dollars. <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why? I don't understand mm. it. Well, the, I don't know. The Saudis seem to have a lot of money, uh, Swanee. It's, it's Oil it's, money. A billion dollars. One a, a billion. billion. How, a how, billion. A billion. How long would the time commitment be? No, it's just to come over and play. And then the... What, one game? No, no. You sign with the tour. You play. You play the tournaments or as many tournaments as mm. you want for that, that tour. But they, then, they've yeah, decided then, to take on the traditional... Uh, you know, infrastructure. Then you disqualified though from playing in the traditional tour for only a year. Uh, no, so- up until until eventually, you know what they're doing. Eventually, they're trying to take over golf, so they'll join back together. They'll merge like cricket did all those years ago. It's all boring stuff, Swanee. It is pretty boring. I only mentioned it too because a billion dollars is a lot. Oh yeah. Yes. And also, I, I was I, it interested me last week because it said that Donald Trump made a surprise appearance at one of the at one of really? the live tournaments last week. And I was thinking, is it really a surprise? It was at his golf course, and also. Uh, that's the only man in president, where, the only president where in, in the four years in term, he's, he played so much golf, his handicap came down during his presidency. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, hey, what's, the, what's the massive surprise there? Yeah, it's not a surprise. Nah. Well, he cheats too. He kicks the ball out in the fairway. Pele, they call him. Yeah. Does he cheat? That's what they call him, Pele, the great soccer player. He's taken the Akamanis oath of... <laughs> <laughs> oh, rule following. Take that yeah, back. Take no, that I won't back. take it back. Honest <laughs> golfer. I won't take it back. He's Swan- organised a golf trip for our premiership reunion at the end of I the year. I bet he has. He's already got his name on the trophy. He's already won. <laughs> 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 when is it? Uh, November. And he's already won by seven strokes. That's amazing. <laughs> a group of campus one I'll finish with has left. Sh- has been left shock. shocked, sorry, after waking to find a giant crocodile. Whoa! Outside yeah. their caravan in a popular Darwin camping spot. So it's, mm. it's a camping spot. So I don't know. Maybe a resort crocodile, your famous character mm. from the past, yeah. has popped down to a camping spot. I'm slumming it today. <laughs> I'm going to check out your annex. <laughs> <laughs> campers, campers at the Dundee Beach Holiday Park were woken by yelling after a 2.5 metre croc sauntered to the bottom of one of the family's caravan steps. Wow. Imagine you're in a caravan, you come to the bottom of your steps, Jeez. there's a crocodile there. I like that they say I was sauntering, I was whistling too. <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost the best thing you do. You know that? Thank you. It's good. Remember our first boss, Soup Cans, was just utterly oh, you confused? You don't throw him under the bus. No, he but, he, but he was confused. He didn't understand the beauty of the resort croc. No. And I love Soup Cans. Resort crocodile. I still remember the story you were talking about. You were talking about a hotel pool in Miami, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And yeah, they, they was found a crocodile there, and then yeah. we, it was named Resort Crocodile, yeah. and then all of a yeah. sudden, the woman of 
was going to say a thousand resort, voices, one voice. One mm. voice, mm. only resort crocodile. But I think, didn't the resort crocodile slip into the spa with a couple? I believe so. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you had it, yeah, he sauntered in. And he was like, hey, mm. make room. Mate, I like that <laughs> character. Anyway, Next. reckon you're up to date. Want to see what happens in the studio? Check it out on Facebook. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Let's go. Win a brand new Mitsubishi Mirage just by hearing one noise. One noise. <laughs> Sam Pang's Jokes Are Funny. This is the longest running competition, I reckon. Mm. This prize is going to be hard won. Emmy from Heidelberg. Emmy. What? Oh, Christ. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Emmy. Hi. Oh, there you are. Hi, Gorgie. How old are you, Emmy? I'm 10. Wow. What's that? Uh, year eight? Great. Year nine? <laughs> She's a genius. That's Kid genius. Right. It's going to be a surgeon. All right. Well, Emmy, it's the chemistry for me. Electric. Isn't it? I don't. Sam with kids. It's a twatter segment. Hey, uh, Emmy, what's your joke? That's enough of this. Uh, I bought a new deodorant the other day. The instruction said, remove cap and push up bottom. It hurt like hell, but my fart smelled great. I don't mind it. It's a good joke. Prince William also would like it. Mm. He'd love it. Good work, kid. Take yep. that to school. Yeah. Mug him off. Hold on. You're Emmy? not doing no bells and whistles from you, then? No, I didn't want to be mean to Emmy no, for some just... reason. A family passed the Triceratops fate of the dinosaurs. Could it be because she's a primary school student? That could be. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a good joke, though. That's going to work at school for Emmy today. Emmy, you'll slay with that at work, my friend. Discover the world's most complete Triceratops fossil at Melbourne Museum. <laughs> What's your favourite dinosaur, Emmy? Um... I don't really have one. Cool. Yeah. Oh, glad. I'm sure she's in grade four. Bye. Five. Uh, grade five. Fran, hit us. Grade one, I would have thought. Morning, all. Oh, hi, Morning. Franny. All right, let's get into this. What do you call an American rapper who cancels their concert? What do you call an American rapper that cancels the concert? Postpone Malone. Postpone Malone. Post. Post. Postpone. <laughs> Good stuff. Postpone. I like the energy, Fran. That Postpone. was, you came out, you... Uh, you yeah, know, off the back of a uh, hammer. Uh, I did good. feel for poor little Emmy. Hey, and I feel like Fran was that an was that an original work from you? No, no, God, no! I'm not that good. That came came home from mum's school for one of my children yesterday. <laughs> I think I think it's an original, and now she's distancing herself from the joke. What would you rather um, come home from school? That joke or head lice? Oh, the joke, hundred percent. Life sucks. Fran, um, you, do you like wine? Um, I don't really drink wine, oh, but... Good. <laughs> You're off to go but... see Nope, only in cinemas, oh, August amazing. 11. It looks real good. Yeah, can I just... Right. Can I warn you? Can yeah. I warn you, right? Yeah. In previous... Because it was in the Best of Dino last week. <clears throat> when you ask personal questions... You're rolling the dice. <laughs> you are rolling the dice. So, so for instance, so, you know, is there a history of dementia in the family? <laughs> that one and was... And then, a... then the caller says, oh, yeah, poor mum. Yeah. The other one is... Uh, what was the other one? Uh, Do, you have, father? Dad, then. Do you have a father? Yeah. Do you have a father? Do you have a father? No. Yeah. Um, and then oh, you said, you backed give, it up with, I was going to give you a father's give you father. Yeah. Uh, who cares as well? Uh, friend. Do, you, what, do you drink? And Fran says, I'm a recovering <laughs> alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 12 years sober. Chris... Chris, good morning. morning. Save us. What do you got? All right, here's, here's the best one yet. Why didn't the crab give to charity? Why didn't the crab give to charity? He was shellfish. He was shellfish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sounds Trabian to me. <laughs> Not Trabian. Not Trabian, more like it. I'm 12, to, 12 years sober. <laughs> Daniel's Donuts, you've got 13 of them, which is a Daniel's dozen. Uh, Thanks, mate. Thanks, uh, guys. Thank you, Chris, uh, for nothing, though. Uh, Brad! <laughs> Good morning, guys. <laughs> what do you got? It's on fire today. All right. Hey, Brad. Little, little Johnny and little Timmy wake up in the morning and little Johnny goes, all right, Timmy, we're going to swear today. You're going to have to follow my lead. He goes, all right, all right. Goes down um, for breakfast and mum goes, all right, Johnny, what do, you want for, what do you want for breakfast? And he goes, I want some bloody Cocoa Pop. Bang, smacks him on the head and sends him to his room and goes, now you think about what you just said. All angry, she looks at Tim and goes, "What do you want, Tim?" And he goes, "Well, not the bloody cocoa pops." Hmm. <laughs> You've upset Rocky. <laughs> I don't even understand it. Come on, Sam. Brad, it's, 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 it's you had a go, mate. Good on you. Yeah. So it's not a good sign when you've got a beg at the end of it for, for anything. Yeah. Uh, Brad's, you know? Brad's it's worse than the explanation of the joke. Hey, Brad, you got a you got a drinking problem? Uh, 
If far from it, I don't touch alcohol. Okay, oh, wow. hey, hey. Good Seven, information. What else you got, Dino? In that fact, my man, you've got a double pass the uh, Boost Mobile Winter Jam at Urban Surf. Pronounced Urban Surf. I wasn't supposed to read the pronounced Ah, you should see six bottles. Dana. All the best, Brad. Getting started. Now, Lou is going to win the car. I just know it. <laughs> what do you got, Lou? Good morning, guys. What did they call Winnie the Pooh when he died? What did they call Winnie the Pooh when he died? Winnie the dead shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good joke. Oh, I've heard that, that was so oh, close, man. man. No, in fact, God. do we need to look at the footage? I don't think you do. No, I didn't. Uh, I, I, I've, I've heard that joke before. That's the only problem. Lou, that was. Do you know what? Go away because there's something about your character and delivery that could win this car. Go, go away this go week. Go away's right. Go away this <laughs> week. Get another joke, and we'll meet you back here. And know that you are you are genuinely close, Lou. Yeah. Uh, you're going to go see Nope only in cinemas August 11. Uh, what's your relationship with alcohol like, anyway? I love it. Six bottles of wine from Zonzo Estate. <laughs> Enjoy authentic Italian cuisine paired with the perfect job at Zonzo and Estate in the heart of the And a free half an hour discussion with us new sponsor. Will Anderson, Chris a comedian who's Brownie. also known for grueling, question everything, and amazing backgrounds on his FaceTime. I don't know where he is, but my God, am I jealous. Here's Will. Welcome to the show, Will. It's always such a thrill. Thank you, Chrissy. Thank you very much for having me this morning. I super appreciate it. Thrill Anderson. Oh. Thrill. Oh, good. <laughs> well, good. Well rested you are, Christy. I am. I mean, if I'd gone in a different direction, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> if, if, more, more your sort of after dark sort of areas. But Thrill Anderson, I think, either that or it feels just like I've moved to a new school and I'm trying too hard for the, the cool nickname. <laughs> you know, my old school, they used to call me. Anderson? Yeah, no, it was definitely my nickname. It certainly wasn't Donuts because I sat around and ate Donuts all the time. It was definitely Thrill Anderson. Thrill Anderson sounds like one of the uh, car drivers in Days of Thunder. Bro. Oh, yes. Yes. oh, yeah. Yes. Good yeah, yeah but Whole de- trickle. Buddy Rowdy, Brother thing. Rowdy, Rowdy Burns <laughs> and, Thrill <Anderson. laughs> and Thrill Anderson. And Thrill Anderson. Thrill Anderson. What a, yeah. what a quartet. Uh, yeah, true. Thrill Anderson's gone into the wall on the first corner. <laughs> Thrill Anderson. Uh, this Sunday, in a in a thrilling announcement for everybody uh, in this fair city, you'll be playing at the Athenaeum Theatre. Your show, Willogical. Is it, is or this... if you like, Chrissy, it can be Thrillogical. Thrillogical. I don't mind. As long as people come, I'm happy. Um, what can what can we expect? And is this one of those shows that's been cancelled a million times and rescheduled and... Yeah, and not only that, it's actually going to be the very last time that I do this show. So this is a show that I was going to tour all over Australia and the world. But it turns out COVID is still not gone, guys. Like, I don't know if you – like, I'm, I know that people are pretending that it's all over, but it turns out it's not all over. I never thought it was because it's peaked, I've seen a Halloween – Apparently I've seen a Halloween big. movie. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure it has. Yeah, sure it has. Yeah, like, just like, it's like every Halloween movie, it's like, Michael Myers is dead. Oh, hang on, there's a sequel. Oh, no, he just fell, on, fell down off screen. And he's a new variant. He's faster this time and he's got magic powers. Oh, well, this is the one that we're with. Do you think we can live with Michael Myers? Yeah, he's just killing old people. I think it's fine. I think he's just mur- murdering old people at the moment. So I think we can just live with him in the community. I think we're living in a world where I relate more to Michael Myers because at least he's still me- wearing a mask. Everyone else is like, why are you still wearing that, mate? You don't have to wear that anymore. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Will, can I just, real quick for Will, you've been making us laugh for 20 years. Why can't people just make Pang laugh once in oh. jokes aren't funny? Where are they going wrong? Well, I mean, here's the first thing that I would say. If, like, I invited my audience along, like, to the show and then just said, you know, y- you win a car, if someone laughs, like that's much more pressure on the environment. Like, you know, like normally people want to come along and laugh. You don't have someone in the audience who's got like a car or an overseas holiday or a huge amount of cash on the line if they actually laugh during the show. So that would be the first thing that I would say. It is a tough assignment. The second one is, you know, I think it's the best segment on radio. And I think Sam, I'm like, I'm, I just want, I just want to say this on behalf of other comedians. Thank you. Thank you for proving to every amateur out there who thinks that they can do our job, that it's not as easy as it seems. Yes. Like, you are the person that week after week is doing the hard work to reassure members of the public that that we should have our jobs and they should not. <laughs> so thank you very much for that. Thank I you. Actually, that. Will, you'd be interested to know, Will, that I think the other day at the golf course, 
Sam walked into the pro shop and received three attempts, didn't you, from the one person? Mate, it was unbelievable. He's in front of... uh, Hang on. Yeah, uh, Will, I wish you were there, but it was... I I like that Will has acknowledged that I'm doing a community service every week. (laughs) That that means a lot from you. But, yeah, just just lining up to play golf, um, bombarded by a, a, a man who went... Four times. Four times. <laughs> I'm standing there. Ju- I just want to, like, pay the fees and just get going. And he's barreled me with four in a row. And I, as I'm just just standing there going, what are you doing? He goes, yeah, mate, use that one on the front bar on Thursday. I go, oh, no worries, mate. I'll open with that one. Thank you very much. What four is- in a row. That, that's way too many, too. I'll give you a practice I'll give you a practice joke. Yeah. But after that, you, if you don't get the first one away, you can't row. do two more. You can't just keep swinging <laughs> at them no. until you hit one. Like, <laughs> Right, like you got to let the you got to let the other people play through. This is the golf course, mate. You can't like this guy's just in the bunker, oh. just like spraying sand everywhere, trying to get a laugh. Mate, you would have felt like Rocky in the first round against Draga. It was tough. Just it was, copying it him was from tough start. So hey, listen, Will, I, just go, Benny. Well, I just want to ask you about your first ever gig or one of your early gigs when you had to yes. make an appearance on Recovery all those years ago as a comedian, not as a host, as the comedian. Yeah, thanks for mentioning I wasn't the host, Brownie. I appreciate that because <laughs> I had um, what I had done was audition to be the host of Recovery. So if people don't remember, it was like a, a, a an early morning Saturday morning uh, like TV show or Sunday morning TV show that would be on the ABC, and it was like live bands, and occasionally they would interview like you know a comedian or a musician, or they might even get a stand up to do stand up comedy. It was beautifully well, hosted by our friend Dylan Lewis. Yeah. Dylan Lewis, like one of the all time greats, Dylan Lewis, and like he was an absolute legend at hosting what was like this chaotic thing in the morning. It was absolutely brilliant. Like he did such a good job. Mm. But I was jealous because I didn't know Dylan back then and he got the job that I wanted to get, Chrissy. So I was going to go in them and show them what a stand-up comedian was. I was, And again, I think it actually, Sam, I think it might have actually been the first edition of Jokes Aren't Funny. In fact, I think I did a four-minute audition of Jokes Aren't Funny. On a, was it like, on a Saturday morning too, wasn't it? Saturday morning, and I reckon Perfect if uh, there had been a car on a line on the line, if any of the kids behind me waving at their mum had laughed at any of my jokes, I would have still had to oh. walk home. <laughs> there would not have been one person in that entire audience who laughed at anything I said if they could hear what I said, because I was delivering it to a camera and a wall while the kids were just behind me waving in the background. <laughs> so anyway, you can see me watching that footage on uh, the ABCs of. Uh, Will Anderson, which is on ABC iView, oh. David Wenham, Wenham interviewed me and he went through all my past career on the oh. ABC and he actually plays that footage, Brownie, and oh. I have to watch it in, in live. In, <laughs> well, in hey, what's that called again? Sorry, Will, what, I missed that. What the, was the ABCs of, oh, you'll love this thing. So they did this. That's unbelievable. They did this little series for the ABC's 90th because we're all celebrating the 90th because we're not sure we're going to make it to 100. And so we've just got to really lean into 90 years of the ABC. And uh, they did this thing where they interviewed Ita Buttrose about her time on the ABC, the head of the ABC, John Howard, the former Prime Minister, Yvonne uh, 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 Gulligan-Cawley, of course, Gary McDonald, Norman Gunston, and me. Or as uh, my friend likes to call it, I'm the only one who won't get a state funeral. (laughs) Uh, Will, Will Logical, Sunday, August 7 at the Athenaeum Theatre. Tickets available at ticketech.com.au. It'll sell out. Be quick, Will Logical. Uh, Real quick, Doggies, have you lost hope of finals? Oh, yeah. No, no, this is this is the bottom boys. This is what we do. Bevo's bottom boys. Yeah, we we only like to... We're no good when we're front runners. We've just got to be sitting in that spot, ready to go, and we're exactly where we... Need to be. <laughs> Not a lot of confidence there. Not a lot of confidence. Do you want to see what this looks like? We'll get the visuals on Instagram. Follow Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie. Uh, it was my son's birthday yesterday. Kit turned 11. Can't believe it. I was looking through old photos and. It's 11 years. It's a long time. There's a photo of me and him when he was a baby. Oh. I've aged about 40 years. In, in the 11 years, like 100%. There's no doubt about it. I can't believe we've seen all cool. your kids grow up. And he's grown. He's a tall boy. He's enormous, taller than me. But uh, cake is one of the big obligations and honour and honours <laughs> of, you know, being someone's mother when they have their birthday. It's my responsibility. And uh, I have I started a tradition where... I got the kids to choose whatever cake they wanted and I would pay somebody to make that amazing cake. You know how people are so clever. 
with with cake mm. art mm. these days. And you know what? Just with the year and the craziness, I forgot that that's what I did. I forgot that that was a tradition that I'd hidden done talent. in the house. Well, no, not yeah, not that a coconut hidden, one. You makes good. Not no 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 not a hidden talent. Just a talent. No talent. I'd forgotten that I outsourced birthday cakes. Gotcha. Ah. I had forgotten completely because I'm busy. <laughs> anyway, I was like, what am I going to make him? And I, he likes chocolate cake. He's the only person in the family that likes chocolate cake. Chocolate cake is not that popular. Mm. Like mud cake is, but not regular chocolate cake. Even mud cake. What? It's not, you'll find it's difference? not that what popular. Is the mud, mud cake and chocolate cake. I'll tell you, mud is closer to a fudge. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a moisture cake. But chocolate cakes in general, like, do your kids like chocolate cake? You'll find that a lot of kids don't really. They prefer other flavours. Let's try it out. A vanilla or whatever. Anyway, mm. Kit wanted a chocolate cake. Bam Bam's too busy eating Brontosaurus burgers or whatever he eats. Bam Bam! I, um, and I don't know how to make a chocolate cake. No. Well, There's an art, it's know? an art form. And the best chocolate cake I've ever had, full disclosure, mm. is the $5 mud cake from Woolworths. Mate. Have you ever eaten? Mm, yeah, that's good. Well, it's they, not too dry because they has a tendency to dry out chocolate. They're cake. so moist. Mm. They're the opposite of dry. Stop they're saying, delicious. Stop moist. saying moist. You yeah. love it. Stop I think it's okay moist. to use moist around cakes, isn't it? See, <laughs> and there's no other word for it. Wet. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't have gone with that one either. Just try <laughs> my wet cake. That yeah. sounds yucky. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it doesn't work, Sam. I know, John. Anyway. Continue on. Don't listen to him. So the the brief is an 11-year-old with a penchant for chocolate cake, Mm. and I want to make it spectacular. So I buy, this is my ultimate birthday cake hack, for somebody that doesn't know how to make those fancy cakes. Mm. I bought three of the Woolworths cakes. Three? Five dollars each. Someone's doing all right. They're five dollars each. Well, you say that. Do you know how much, do you know how much, (laughs) you say that. Prove it. Exactly. <laughs> Show me the receipt. So they're five dollars each, and then I chopped the icing off two of the layers. Yes. And then I peeled the giant cupcake, you know, yeah. lining off. Yeah. And I stacked the cakes. Oh. One, two, three. That would have been fun. With whipped cream in between. Great idea. So good. That then, would have made that moist. Yeah, yeah. and it was already like moist. Cream. It increased the moistness yeah. by at least 50%. A hugely wet cake. Yum. Wet and creamy. Yes. Like, and delicious. Um, uh, anyway. Come on. Did anyway. you eat the whole thing? Wait, wait. The next step is coming. So Just Calm down. You've got Over one there, layer yeah. of cake, layer of cream, layer of cake, layer of cream, yeah. top layer of cake. Then I made, this is the one thing I did make, is, do you know, have you, have you heard of chocolate ganache? No. Okay, so heard of Grenache. No, it's g- red wine. Ganache, Ganache. It's um you yeah. know, like a glossy French oh, no. icing. Oh. And then I made that and smeared it all over the cake. So it was just this giant chocolate moist How big was this thing? About big. about thirty centimetres yeah. minimum high. And French, you say? French. Sounds straight me in to me. It was. That's exactly <laughs> what Kit said. <laughs> so then it, I put it was it just in the, to get to that. I yeah, put well it in done. the fridge. Earlier, me and Peg had been to Kmart mm. and bought light-up letters for KIT and sparklers and everything. She put it all together. It was an extravaganza. It looked like a wedding cake, like a fancy. It looks good. It was Show incredible. And it cost almost nothing. And it was moist, delicious. Shut up. <laughs> it was so moist. Yes. And we just had lots of pieces of it with cream all What's over this? it just to add to the Jeez, moistness. It was good. moist. <laughs> you can't get a wetter cake. <laughs> Sam's got a moist thing. My mum was eating it. She goes, you know what it, What this cake is? Oh, this yeah, is moist. It. Wow. Yeah. Kate Sobrano's coming up. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Morning, Melbourne. It seems to be settling down out there after a wild and Woolly evening. It even scared our own Oops. Sam Pang. It did. It what did. It was terrifying. I'd love to take you on a, tri- a trip to Germany, Sam. Mm. Why? Well, I just uh, I just heard that there's a hotel uh, over there in Cologne mm. that is offering now Kölner. Beer, Kölner. beer from a beer tap beside the sink in your own suite. Yes. So you go and have a shower. Whoa. You brush your teeth. Yeah. And you start your day off. <laughs> And just pour yourself a big Kolsch beer. How is that? Oh, no, a nice it, big stein. How has it taken this long? 
Right. Yeah. Can you believe it? It's taken until 2022 for that to be a thing, Swanee. Imagine how many men will be in the ensuite and women going, what are you doing in there? Nothing. Nothing. No, I'm just brushing my teeth again. Yeah. <laughs> I love in beer. I love, though, how they explain that it's not all you can all you can eat, pretty much, all you can drink. There's oh. only five litres available. <laughs> go, oh, oh, Seems a lot. Come on. That should get us through the day. That's a good economy, though, because just straight to the toilet, straight back to the tap, oh, yeah. straight to the a toilet. Yeah. This is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. Now it is time for Salmon's Random Thoughts. Random thoughts that I've written down over the last few weeks that I bring to you now. I love this segment. Could be my favourite. It's a bit of... Oh, so many to choose from, Christine. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm an identity man, but, you know... Because that's been a while. Been a while. Hey, listen, let's get into it. Yeah. I, you know, I wear Blundstones. I, I didn't like know it. that. I like that, obviously. But I only think of Blundstones, I think of just the brown, traditional mm. Blundstones. Someone yeah. told me the, that there's the whole a... whole range. Yeah. the Is range. There? Is there a range or is it kind of just different? A diff- is well, there black shades. ones? Is there black ones? Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah, there's all different my idea is, My idea is coloured blounds. Sorry. My idea is coloured Blundstones. Not pink ones. All colours. Mm. They should. This is their time to to you know branch out. Branch out. Yes, yeah, so a product line extension. Is well, the well, added, term. well, you know, Adidas or Nike don't just have black runners, do That's they? So they got true. a lot of colours. I'm point. talking about coloured blundstones. Yeah. I I might wear coloured ones. That's a good idea. Like an olive green or something. Some yeah, of these are gold. Like Uber. Well, listen, <laughs> Uber, but where the car rolls up and you get to drive it, called Uber. Take it. Mm. There's a million dollars. <laughs> a billion dollars. A billion. Hey, um, I was just thinking, I wrote this down. Imagine having to MC. We've all MC'd events. You know, yes. you've done the, you've, your charity yeah, awards, Swanee. You've, you did uh, your share, fair share of Priceline uh, engagements. Sure. Imagine, Dana, what have you done? I've done dog shows. There you go. Of stuff. Imagine having to MC the MC of the Year Awards. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> How tough would that be? How tough would that be? But what an accolade as well. How well, good would you have to be? You'd have to be Larry M. I'm not level. sure how good you'd have to be. You'd have because what I'm assuming in that audience and the nominees uh, yeah. that the best of the best is in front of you. That's and true. imagine if you're emceeing the MC of the Year Awards. Yeah. That's a yeah. tough crowd though. So it'd be very judgmental. Absolutely. Imagine how nervous. Oh, I could have done that better. Imagine yeah. how yeah. nervous Luke great. McGregor would be if he was the MC of mm. the MC. Of the year awards. They do a Greg Page. Who's a better MC, Seb Costello or your cousin Muggsy? Who you like? Jeez, uh, neck and neck. Yeah. Muggsy's uh, his Muggsy. ability. Well, a bit, Muggsy's ability to adapt yeah. on the fly mm. is amazing. Yeah. Extraordinary. You know, some of his guests who lost the plot mid, both, mid uh, talk. Both, both very available, would have thought, if you need Seb or Muggsy. I think you can get them. You can definitely get Muggsy. Hey, Seb's I, not talking. No. Is he? Because uh, Ricky Nixon uh, broke his face. Mm. Is that right? Yeah. Mm. And the shame of being told that he's not uh, introducing Jack the Snake Roberts anymore. He's now introducing Sam <laughs> Payne, who's then going to introduce Jack the Snake Roberts on stage at the Corn Hotel. Still hasn't gotten over that, even though it was 18 months ago. No, no. He, he was on this show. Equally as big an honour, he said. <laughs> uh, this is a random thought. I just wanted to never... Let's never forget... That this tune by Vin Diesel is a banger. <laughs> it's a ra- it's just a random thought. Can't you? I've never seen you more joyous. Wait for it, here we go. It kicks in. Oh! Kiss your level. Oh mate, right there. Really? He's definitely There's got pre- a French stick stuck in his throat. I don't know. He does whatever he wants. That's what he does. I don't know, Bob. Uh, I saw a story, Swanee, that, uh, that re- the headline was an asteroid. This was a couple of months ago, but I, I wrote it down. Asteroid half the size of a giraffe strikes Earth off the coast of Iceland. And I was thinking what a strange unit of measurement uh, a giraffe is, or Very half a giraffe. So. But I think that it should be used more. Brownie. Like, for instance, if you mm. could you start using it in footy commentary, like if Buddy Franklin's got a kick for goal and, you know, your fellow commentator says, but Jonathan Brown, how far has Buddy Franklin got to kick this? And you say, Pro, two or three giraffes. Yes. He's got to kick this two or three giraffes for the swans to, you know. I like that. Mate, just to- <laughs> it's a bit like... Uh, half a giraffe. A, half a, that, that, was the, that was the asteroid half the size of a giraffe strikes the earth off the coast of Iceland. Half? 
Well, and how big is a giraffe? Well, we, a, a, unit, a, a measurement unit is horsepower. You know, so we refer to horsepower, so this is just a different uh, way of measuring length or distance. You're there with the mm. yeah, with Gary Long. Oh, guys, he'd have to kick this two, three giraffes <laughs> for, uh, for the swans to... Uh, yeah. he's 55 giraffes out. No, that's oh, probably that's too far. Lot. That's too yeah. far. That Come could, on, give, John, it some, probably, give it a chance. No he's 18 kick. giraffes out. No, we don't know. How, we don't know how big a giraffe is. Is no. it just the giraffe neck or the hot? No, it's top exactly. Yeah. Okay. Ah, well, look. No, stuff happy to workshop them. Workshop them. Oh, no, it feels like oh, I, I do. do. Actually, I think we're. I'm not do. sure, <laughs> but it feels. Oh, what, what is he saying? I don't know, but, but I feel it like, feels like, like I do. Yeah, it's stupid. No, it's not. Take it You're back. Stupid. Yeah, it is. No, it's stupid. Oh, don't say it that. It doesn't even make sense. If, you, if you're stupid, it doesn't make sense. Got it. <laughs> Stay down. Got it. Hey, yesterday, uh, yesterday uh, during Tony Martin's segment, I, I'm not, I'm not that uh, proud of it, but I did wheel out, um, <laughs> I did wheel out a bottle shop uh, story that, look, I thought it was a cracker, but anyway, it didn't seem to go that well. <laughs> you know, I set up my fair share of uh, displays in a bottle shop, by the way. You know, it was a source of pride. How do you decide? Is it the things that are on special or you just choose, sort of choose your own adventure? <laughs> no, it would be, there'd be a promotion, do you know what I mean? A salesperson would come mm. in and say, listen, yeah. we're pushing this this week. Here's some stuff and here's the... Yeah. Anyway, it's all in the book, mate. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Here's some uh, uh, stuff. Yeah, you know, <laughs> sorry, good stuff. Lost some, I lost a bit of confidence. But oh yeah, it's all in the book. <laughs> I, can I just say though that um, and I thought I thought you know I worked in that bottle shop for five six years part time. Mm. I've got I got lots. Of, that's just one of many anecdotes I have. Yeah, Jermaine, you know I mean? I've got I could I could write a book about my days in the bottle shop. <laughs> really, and, it, and it's, that wouldn't make the cut though. Who knows? I'll just like that that book, the tender bar. Yeah. Whereas about you know growing up in a bar, yep. you could be growing up in a bottle shop. I could, ver- I could very much do it. And so it actually made me think of a possible new segment. Time now for another ordinary anecdote from Sam's days working in a bottle shop. It was late one Sunday night and I'd just served one of the locals a six-pack. Later on, I discovered that the man had left his wallet behind. To make sure it was his, I opened it up and found that there were $60 in it. So the next time he came in, I returned his wallet complete with the money inside. I could tell he was grateful because as he left, he said, Thanks, mate. I'll be more careful next time. <laughs> and that's how you... Anyway, what? it's all in your book. And that's how you do it. And I've got a million of them. I've got a million of them. If you I'm yeah. here for Tell them, them somewhere else. <laughs> Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. Another iconic legend has just penned a book. Uh, Eddie Betts, the great Eddie Betts, who's just retired. Carlton legend, Adelaide legend. I'll tell you what, the Adelaide Crows will be more an Adelaide guy. No, I love him, but yeah, yeah. Played his best footy at Adelaide. That hurts you, doesn't it? As a Carlton supporter, <laughs> it's funny. You know, every now and then, I wear my Eddie Betts. They released yeah. a, a long sleeve top for mm. it to, to celebrate his three hundred and fiftieth game, right. mm-hmm. <laughs> and it had a list of his achievements, right? But yeah, he, and it, it's in the blue. It's in the navy blue, and it's a Carlton thing. Mm. Yeah, most of his achievements happened when he was playing for Adelaide. That's that right. Hurt, that does hurt. Nice. <laughs> Just like Chris Judd, suck it. Yeah, suck it. Uh, four go. <laughs> <laughs> Four goal a year he won, and, and he ran f- second five times. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, it was a goal a year. And mate, that's some mark of the year as that well. seems unlucky. Anyway, he penned, yeah. he penned yeah. this book, Swanee, and we're focusing now on this whole Adelaide Crows saga. And the Crows, it's fair to say, have been damage control this morning. Okay, so this, tell me about this story. Well, this whole sort of uh, leading into the 27 grand final where they'll spank by the Tigers... Now, they're the hot favourites going to the grand final. The that, 27. 2017. 2017 grand final. Okay. So the prelude, the, the weeks leading into that. Where I they, remember this. They got a, a leadership company, an external leadership company in called Collective Mind, which yeah. is out there. It's in the public. Can't get sued over that, even though Eddie hasn't mentioned them in the book. Um, they came in to help with some of the leadership stuff. Uh, and then they did a pre-season camp after the 2017 grand final loss. So this period spans about... Yeah, it's, let's call it six to 12 months. Well, Eddie has detailed some of the goings on is and it, just how horrific some of his experiences were. Is it fair to say that um, it was not 
Kumbaya, it was SAS. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, and worse. Uh, well, SAS, but uh, I, I think it seems logical, some of the SAS stuff. You're going mm. to war, but some of the mind games I'm playing. Lady well, said, uh, I felt like a piece of me was brainwashed after the experience with these uh, set, with these sessions. Uh, there was, this is quite, there was all sorts of weird shit that was disrespectful to many cultures, but particularly and extremely disrespectful to my culture. Eddie wrote in the book. Um, I'm going to take you to this one. The Now, the, the, the leadership company at stages in the lead up to 2017 after losing successive games, they reviewed game videos and gave feedback to players in a team meeting about their facial expressions because their facial expressions weren't serious enough and weren't warrior-like when they ran through a team banner. So they were giving feedback about how they... Lo- what? Uh, come, to, come to think of it, I've s- some of your bloody smirks some mornings in here, Sam, some of your facial expressions. Mm, no, Not on. <laughs> Lift. Can I, um, can I uh, suggest that this is newsworthy because it feels as though ever since that camp that uh, the Adelaide Crows and the, the others involved have been on the defensive about this and they've said, no, no, you know... They nothing to see here. Nothing to see here, and they've, you know, it's it's been investigated, and there was nothing, you know, untoward, and we thought this was completely normal. Obviously, it didn't work for Adelaide, Dada, but both Adelaide and everyone from outside is on. They they were in a grand final, and then this all Hot happened, favorites. and then since then they've been a basket case, mm. right? So, Eddie, for Eddie to do that, this is why it's newsworthy for Eddie to say this seems to go against everything that's that's um, that's been said since it happened. Astonishing. Astonishing some of the things. Exactly right. So he's blown it all out of the water. So the evidence is out there. Another one, they had to stand around in a circle, make eye contact with each other and scream profanities at each other. <laughs> one of the younger uh, Indigenous boys said to Eddie, I see you as an uncle. I don't really like screaming F you at you. Yeah, fair um, enough. And then they went on to say the, the, the company got them to practice a power stance. So the power stance, which was famous in those in that in that finals run in 2017. Corny. Of course, in the grand final, it was embarrassing where they would stand there in a strong position with their arms out to the side and death stare the opposition. Eddie said they were forced to practice that at training in the lead up to the grand final. <laughs> No wonder they got their ass kicked. Yeah, no, they, no, <laughs> what were the coaches they were, doing? They, were, they had the practice standing still. They were pretty. They, they they were very good at. By the way, they did it during the first and second <laughs> quarter of that grand final. They did by the too, way. didn't they? How can a team or a coach or whoever's making these decisions miss the mark so? I badly? know it is it is shocking. You go, geez, leadership. You know, where was it? Where was it? Ah, uh, then. The grand final, they were spanked. Mm. After the grand final, they came up with the ingenious idea, let's have a pre-season camp. Now, we've all done these gruelling pre-season camps where it's very physical. Melbourne Storm do one every year, but there's none of this crap that goes on. Uh, so they were, they were, they were um, uh, blindfolded, thrown onto a bus after doing a training session, Whoa. and then driven to a secret location with the Richmond theme song blaring through the speakers of the bus on the hour-long trip <laughs> to the secret location. This is <laughs> Nick Malloy, so Nick Malloy has this pays to have this done to him every Friday night anyway, by the way. Uh, When they got there, uh, Eddie was forced to be initiated uh, by jumping into a body harness with rope attached, and then he had to fight through his teammates and told to try and find his way towards a knife so he had to cut himself free. That was what? the initiation. This prepares you for football, doesn't it? Now, this is the big quote. Things were yelled at me that I had disclosed to the camp's counsellors before the camp, which he thought was private. All the people pre- present heard these things. I was exhausted, drained and distressed about the details being shared. Another camp dude, one of the facilitators, jumped on my back and started to, to berate me about my mother. Something so deeply personal that I, that I was absolutely shattered to hear it come out of his mouth. Oh, my God. This is bizarre. And then at the end of the camp, the players were told they all sat around and they were all in a safe space and talk about the issues that were affecting him. Then they did an exercise where we, start, where we, <coughs> where we sat around and did role play. That consisted of role playing our responses to our partners when we got home to tell them about our experiences on the camp. What is going on here? And wasn't there, what happened, a, wasn't what there happened, a bit of a scandal with some one of the team members coming out at the time and saying this was awful and we don't we don't like it? Wasn't there that as well? 
There was it lots feels of feels like there was of, there, there was lots of uh, a blowback, or there was lots of um, mm. on the on the on the back of this happening. But yeah, yeah. But, but this is yes. this seems to have been the first time that's actually been. Oh yeah, a lot of the details the have way, come out these de- these details. Are, whatever happened to just kick the kick? I know. Hey? What happened to just a little bit of circle work and just uh, a bit know. of lame work? It's weird the role playing. My, my experience with role playing, you know, Pikey's sitting in the corner with a snooker ball in his mouth. But you know, that was all. <laughs> But that was okay. Why didn't you put that in your book, by the way? Why don't you put that detail in your book? Now, hey, when you're playing golf today, yeah. I want to see the power stance on the first tee, Sam. Shut Come on. But anyway, there that you go. That is unbelievable. Doing a bit of damage control from the Crows Terrific. today. And Eddie's not doing any uh, not publicity doing today, and I get it. I'm looking forward to I'm working with him at Fox Footy on Sunday oh, afternoon. Yeah. I'm sure you'll ask him a real golf. hard question. I'm sure we will. But uh, there you go. So... Well, Having said that, I'd rather go to that camp than have a skin fault test. <laughs> Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Kate Sobrano, an icon of the Australian music industry, and her latest album, Sweet Inspiration, is out now. You can also catch Kate live at the Palms at Crown as part of her Sweet Inspiration tour. Go to katesobrano.com for more info. Here's Kate. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You are a living national mm. treasure right here before our... <laughs> Our very eyes, and we're so thrilled to have you. Oh, guys, I'm very, very thrilled to be had. I got to say, this morning I woke up, I was a little bit nervous because you know you're kind of in and back on the train, as it were. I've done 60 gigs this year. Whoa. Haven't done much radio. I have 60 gigs. We have had to. It's do only s- July. Isn't I know. It? No, it's August. Yes. Well, they're called the COVID catch up because a lot of them were booked two years ago, and they've just moved three, four times, and then we just have to commit. People kept their tickets, mm. and then need to show up. <laughs> it was a, obviously a crazy time in COVID with all the lockdowns here in in Melbourne, and I know that you're a, a Melbourne gal. I think what kept me sane was the fact that I could still come in to to this studio, so I had some routine. But I really felt for people that need. Human people who need, need people. People. <laughs> people who need people who are obviously the, the creatives and mm. the artists among us. I really felt for you guys. How did you cope with being cut off from your source? Well, in- interestingly enough, the first year I kind of came out like at a bullet at a gate and thought, this is my job. As an entertainer, I've got to keep the spirits up, I've got to keep everyone bright. Mm-hmm. And my husband, like little Paddy going to Vietnam. That's it. Yeah, you yeah. know, that's, that's exactly what it was. Yeah. My husband's a filmmaker and his business, of course, nothing there. So we sort of broadcast from home every Friday and we raised tens of thousands of dollars for Support Act, which was my industry and keeping people who weren't in an eligible industry mm. who didn't get any kind of help to be helped, you know. And a lot of the time, those people weren't being helped to just pay the bills or, you know, they, they don't have a mortgage, most of them. It was mostly just so that they didn't have to get out of the business. Yeah. And we've lost so many in the business. Like, we don't have lighting riggers, we don't have, um, cine- you know, we don't have the just the, the casual workers who've been so loyal for 25 years. Mm. They've all gone on to do other things. They don't even work in music anymore. Unbelievable. Yeah, and, they're not, and they're not coming back, are they? Well, they can't because they they just didn't have the residuals to kind of support them or their families, and they're probably in deficit now yeah. to the Such arts, and they have to. So I'm telling you, with with hand on heart, I'm so very very proud to be working, and I'm out there in amongst it. But it is just a handful of us that have kind of managed to stay in the gig. Mm. Kate, I want to ask you. I've performed with my daughter. I've sang a song with my oh, daughter uh, on the radio, which is a bit of fun. Obviously, she carried me. But you have performed live on stage yeah. with your daughter at a charity oh, there, which amazing. you were at, Chrissy. Oh, what was I that get, like? I get goosebumps just <laughs> thinking about seeing the two oh, of she's you such together. A cutie. She's the younger, newer, and improved model of Kate Sobrano. I'm just how you kind of you love to think of your spawn as like you know this is the one that's going to beat yeah. everything I've ever tried to be, mm-hmm. and she will. I mean, in her own way with no, you know, just as being a human, she's already so much more than I I feel I have ever been. She's so, um, well, she's one of the new gen, as you've probably got a clutch full of kids who are looking mm. into a, a world that I don't even recognise no. anymore. Um, the way that they're so studied and a bit, they're able to be in communication, like, digitally, mm. uh, it just freaks me out. I don't understand it. It's scary. That. Does so, she know how cool you are? Oh God, no! Oh, oh no! No, I'm like that. No, surely no. Kate Sobrano's <laughs> she, daughter would know. No, but she respects me. Great, because she knows how hard I work. Mm. Now I reckon, like, she's not necessarily into my music, but I'm at the moment I'm touring with a with a group, which is made up. I've got, I've actually got four women on stage: drummer, bass player. 
guitarist. Dino, One you would cool. absolutely the love this. I'm in. It's are they so really, cool. They're, they're adorable. And, and when I say that, I'm not diminutive. She's in there, but don't. they're rock dogs, they're rock. too. They're it's, the, the, it's not like a Wiggles. It's oh. not adorable. <laughs> no, no, it's, no, no. No. So she looks at us, she's like, damn, word. You know, it's yeah. all these kind of like wow. <laughs> snapping her fingers like, look at my mama go, you know. <laughs> and we've got a bunch of horn players this year, too. So... Um, I haven't had horn players, like, couldn't afford that. I've been through every single cut down, like, from going out on the road, just acoustic going out on the road, trio going out on the road with a full band. And, Chris, you saw it when we had the full band, and it's just the best. Yeah. I felt like it was, honestly, the world fell away and it was just you and me and Gypsy in the yeah. room. Oh, yeah. There was hundreds of people there. <laughs> but I was just so excited to see... You, so full of joy. I mean, it comes out of oh. every pore of you, how much Mate, I'm of just a so grateful you are. to be working. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm closer to 60 than I am 50 these days, and there's only a handful of us, you know, one on each hand, of women in the business still standing. <laughs> I hate to say that. Kate, question. Yeah, go on. <laughs> standing on the stage, looking out at the audience, you would have seen millions of people in your life, collectively. Yeah. What's have you ever looked into the audience and thought, wow, that's different? I haven't seen that before. Any crazy stuff? Yeah, yeah, shit. Oh, absolutely. Well, like what? I think a lot of people these days are crying a lot more than they ever did. Yes. Really? Yeah. Like I think that they're 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 and they're showing up more as couples. Like it used to be that you just get just girls to a certain artist or just blokes to a certain artist, and you've now got people. They are engaged in each other's lives that one can't go without the other, and that's a good thing. Um, it means that we understand what the arts mean to people. It mm. means collectively, you know, mm. being in the same room with each other, sitting and singing and mm. spitting and kissing and touching mm. and, you know what I mean, all this. Yeah. Um, festivals are really very different. Like, the yeah. splendour in the glass, grass was. Well, that was sadly mm. They got disaster. bogged. Yeah. They were bogged in, <laughs> yeah, I know, but still they show up. Yes, rain, they, shame, they, started rain, doing, they started doing gigs around around the venue, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. they probably in the pubs and... Those oh, well, ones that were cancelled, they just, yeah, they kept going. See, there you go. Oh, yeah. but, but Spirit, hey, can I? My, but yeah, sorry. Warm up exercises. So, Brownie's got his, you know, <laughs> I don't, that's a, it's a very unique voice you would describe it as. <laughs> as a bit hey. of tomba there. <laughs> how, how do you warm up? His voice box was smashed. Mm. I think, you know what I've just yeah. worked, Ow, just worked that's out? That's like karate chop to the yeah. throat. Yeah. That's your stup- not nice. Your stupid question of actors, how they remember their lines. I've got my equivalent is asking singers, how do they warm up? What do you got? Um, do you ever find as an actor, though, that it kind of puts you off your game if you try to, try to focus on it too much? Like when someone says to a tennis player, how you hold your racket? Mm-hmm. Or, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, yes. okay, hold yes. on. But in the, lead up to you, in the lead up to you walking out on the You're stage and entertaining. You're going to deconstruct I I just want to know. What do you got? Um, I usually go, yeah, what did you guys get up to this weekend? And the other guy goes, oh, well, I just went out and had a couple of drinks with my mates. <laughs> so I'm like, talk. amazing, that's incredible. And then what do you wear? Oh, I like your dress. Oh, yeah, that's really nice. And then we go, yep, ready, everybody? Okay, on stage. <laughs> amazing. You just no it. no you just vocal exercises then, nothing. You're a natural. Yeah, I'm go, not, I love it. I, I am a very um, earthbound kind of girl, although I do know that at times when I've been really pumping it and I've gotten very, very anxious you'll use parts of your body that you don't need to. Like, I'm sure an athlete will mm. tell you. You'll overwork, mm. you, you know, like you'll run too hard and, and mess your lungs up for the whole game. Yep. There's mm. times when you come out and you know there are certain people in the audience and you're freaking out mm. and then you try too hard and that's when, it, that's when you muck Do you ever up. have a couple of, couple of drinks or just a drink before and to settle your nerves? And that is how the business began. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say... A campfire, a few ales, <laughs> losing one's inhibition. Oh, there you go. I was going to say, because your brother, I work with your brother on a Saturday night oh, and he mate, leads the, the best one. on ground band and he slips away and just warms himself up with a couple of quiet ones. There's yeah. so much so, I want to talk to you about. Really uh, we didn't even touch on Masked Singer, on your time on well, the Masked Singer so as the line. About. There's so much to talk about. Um, Love those outfits. And also, we're about the same age. And are you loving Stranger Things and the reintroduction of all the music that we loved? Oh yeah, okay. Being good. introduced to yeah, our, yeah, yeah, yeah. our kids. My daughter's nine and just is a massive eye roller every time I try and play her stuff that means something to me. Mm. Until now, wow. And Stranger Things, we've got like I've been talking about it, about, it, about it on air because she loves the show, so they all love the show. Yeah, girls on film, Duran Duran. Oh. Um, whip it, Devo. <laughs> I just died in your arms tonight. Remember cutting crew. Do you crew? remember singing that on morning television with me? 
What? Do you remember that? Do you remember when we said, and you did this whole... You did. Yes, I did. And you smashed it. You are a great singer. Oh, my God, I do remember that. Uh Uh-huh. What a moment. I love you so much, and I'm just so thrilled that you're here. Two big things that have happened on your old show, The Circle. Yeah. You forgot that Steve Vizard used to be a weekly guest. Yeah. And you sang live with Kate Sabana. And what is my excuse for these, for getting... Alcohol. No. (laughs) Lots of small kids. Too much work. I can't remember a goddamn thing from about three or four years. You know, that's professional amnesia, we call it, in the business. I've got tickets to your show at the the, the Palm but I don't know if I love anyone enough to go with them and I might just go on my own. Well, you I'm know quite what? serious. We can self-satisfy these days, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey. That's my Spot on. <laughs> Kate's, Kate's latest album, Sweet Inspiration, is out now and to catch Kate live at the Palms Crown as part of her Sweet Inspiration tour, go to katesobrano.com for more info. Now, look, this is cheeky of me, but... I don't suppose you could perhaps uh, sing us out. Uh. Well, I, look, I know you made that sound like you hadn't even planned this. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> I want you to know, listening people, I've been under a great deal of pressure. In fact, I'm sweating here in the studio because they've given me just possibly one of the hardest songs in the universe to sing. But it is the most popular. <sighs> and I'm hoping that, you know, next year Bedroom Eyes is going to be hitting its 40, 40th birthday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, Daryl Braithwaite can go out with the horses and I'm going to, you know, someone's going to bring back bedroom eyes to stranger things, right? Hell yeah. The one that's right up there at the top of the pops right now is this one. I'm going to give it a red hot crack, shall we? Oh, are we yeah. doing this? Okay, are we actually oh, doing so this? Right. So Am excited. I singing on this? Yes, right, you are. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Look out. All right, here we go. I love wish you. Me luck, wish me luck. Here we go. Good luck. Kate Sobrano. Kate Sobrano.com. Go see her at the Palms. Thank you so much for coming. For Chrissy, Sam and Brown, every show will be back tomorrow. Chrissy, Sam and Brown, unless it's a weekend. Here is a 100.